Well, I'm going to highly recommend that you watch this whole video called The Hidden Passage, Supernatural Spaces 2, Where Spirits, Gods, and Monsters Dwell. It is well worth watching the entire thing, which is about an hour and ten minutes long. But I'm just going to share one more little clip with you here because, man, this is, like, so perfect for what I've been trying to uh, relay to everyone in the fact that we have so much more power and ability than we have ever been led to believe that we actually have. And that there are, in fact, people called light workers or grid workers upon this planet. And apparently, apparently, the Native Americans and the shamans knew of this these type of people. And this is the first I'm learning of this confirmation. And I would love to share it with you. So why do these interactions with sacred space yield such fruitful results? Consider the esoteric idea that we've previously explored that the physical world is one of limitation, receiving only a fraction of the full power of the upper worlds. And this is restricted by something like the metaphysical equivalent of a governor on an engine. In succeeding in his mission, the journeyer is able to pull down some of this sequestered power into his Middle Earth, attaining an extraordinary prize which, in its place of origin, is actually ordinary. In modern language, we could call it hacking the programming, or breaking out of the matrix, or even modding a video game. But from the perspective of the programmer, it's just a few lines of code. Sacred space represents the conduit through which this can be achieved. I kind of think of it like the script extender. In some cases, it was even believed that gifted individuals could actually do something like reconfigure the energetic structure of the Earth itself. An Incan legend regarding the famed ruler Manco Capac states that he was able to shift a power center from Tibet all the way to the Peruvian Andes, somehow redirecting this stream of energy with a golden staff. Now that is some serious wizard stuff. Got that is exactly what light workers and grid workers are doing on planet Earth present day. How do I know this? Because I am one. And I have offered numerous times to any of you who would like to contribute a PDF that is available to you by donation only. I am not putting a price tag on it. If you want to learn how to do this, tap into this power, tap into this energy, help to heal the planet, heal yourself, heal everything, by all means, please click the link and go get your PDF because this is exactly what I do on a daily. This is how I know to, pa to be able to part storms and defuse earthquakes and defuse hurricanes and such or bring the rain when it's necessary. All, the, all of which was taught to me by my Native American grandfather. All of those things that had to do with weather. My grandfather taught me that. Because he too would part the storm or call on the rain. We can all do this. And I just wanted to share this little clip with you. That was definite confirmation that the Native Americans even knew about grid workers and light workers. Who could help to move the energy sources or in my case, help to hold back a pole shift. <laughs> Guys will hear that and just think, hell yeah. There are also a separate set of locations where pilgrimages are made to reciprocate power given through prayer and offering. Lake Tom stated, this kind of energy is needed to replenish her psychic centers. As a living organism, the earth needs recharging because it can occasionally become drained. 
You see? Our ancestors built these very intricate, fantastic architectural feats that we still cannot replicate to this day that acoustically would resonate and reverberate back into Mother Earth to rejuvenate her.